Hey guys, welcome to my channel or welcome back. My name is Laura for those of you that do not know and today's video is going to be a pretty funny one. I've seen a couple people here on booktube doing things like this recently and I just think it looks so fun and I wanted to do it myself and that is reacting to negative reviews of my favorite books. So I'm basically going to go on Goodreads, look up some of my favorite books, go to the one or the two star reviews and read some of those for you guys and react to them. For some reason a lot of my favorite books are like severely hated on like people just don't like them especially on booktube um so i feel like there's gonna be a lot of funny reviews out there for some of my favorite books so that's another reason why i really wanted to do this video so i'm just gonna go on goodreads i think the first book that we're gonna start out with is after just because i know you guys are probably here for that just because after is like a super hated on book i'm sure anybody that knows the series has heard of it is aware that it does have a lot of hate so i thought we could start there and we'll see what we find so after does have an average of 3.75 on goodreads which i don't even think is bad um when you open up the community reviews the one stars how many one star ratings are there is there a way to tell 4665 one star reviews for after by anna todd okay let's take a look okay starting with um this review from chelsea chelsea says i'm pretty fucking sure everyone who rated this high don't even read real books you all just liked the smut read sex scenes so much you don't even know what a good book looks like and don't tell me I didn't like this book because of the smut. It's Harry, or Harden, and Tessa's love story. Because oh, how many times have I heard this one? One, their love story is shit. Two, there are millions. Do you hear me? Millions other books, fanfics, that have better love stories, but you don't want to read them. I don't know about you guys, but Chelsea seems like really mad. Like she seems so upset. Like that was in all caps, by the way. I don't know if I like, presented that correctly but it's in all caps um i find it very interesting that she's assuming that we've only all read after like you don't know what any other good books are because you only read after like if you read after it's the only book because it's not even a real book um that you've ever read and it's your favorite book and you only like it for the sex scenes very interesting oh my god I, i'm just looking at the review and it's like she'll write like something from the book and then her critique is like all caps like it's so funny um <laughs> i don't know it's so funny she made like this other little list of like things that she really hated it's called her are the other things that i hated about the fic boring plain crap and rushed writing style typos anna is too lazy to correct interesting critique considering i just read a typo from chelsea but it's fine like anna's writing a book so we'll give her that one um tons of huge gaping plot holes no character development at all stupidity of characters tessa young <laughs> just tessa young um the fact that anna did not only change the one direction boys personalities but she also made them into sick womanizing holes which by the way real fans are trying to get off harry's image to the media okay <laughs> i just like don't know what to say like i feel like and correct me if i'm wrong like those of you that like after like me i feel like everybody that critiques after is basing their critiques solely on the first book which i guess is fair because you don't have to read a whole series you know but i feel like people that judge like harden and tess's relationship really don't understand it unless you've read all four books like you don't get it and you don't understand like the way that anna did their relationship like in my opinion at least harden and tessa are like the prime example of two people meeting when they're just too young and immature to know how to handle themselves correctly in a relationship and it's like People always talk about like that one girl that like got away because you were too stupid to know how to keep her. That's how I feel about Harden and Tessa. And you wouldn't know that unless you've read the whole the whole series. So um, while Chelsea raises some interesting points, I don't, I don't have a comeback. Like we all have opinions. It's fine. I'm just wow. Chelsea's upset. <laughs> This is so funny. This is um part of somebody named Taylor's one star review and like she goes into some detail about certain things that she's critiquing which is totally fine but I just want to read like her little closing paragraph. It's so funny. She goes, 
Overall, I hated this book, and I hope I never have to read anything like this ever again. I'm sad that I wasted my time on this book, but I'm also glad I read it, because I've wanted to read the book for a while now. Um, I wish I had something positive to say about this book besides the cool cover, but I can't think of one almost good thing. It was so poorly written that I was basically in tears because it was just so bad. I don't want to say I'd burn this book, but I also wouldn't save it if it spontaneously combusted. <laughs> That's actually so funny. Like, I can't even like respond to that. It's just hilarious. I wouldn't save it if it spontaneously combusted. I like love people that are creative in their reviews. Like, if you're gonna give a one star review, at least like make it funny. Like, she, Taylor, you made it funny. Like, that's fine. Um, okay, so that's gonna be it for after. I think the next book that I want to look up is Looking for Alaska because I know a lot of people have like their issues with this book. I personally love it and I really stand by the fact that I love it. Every time I reread it, I'm like, maybe this time I'll hate it. Like everyone seems to hate it, so maybe this time. And then I reread it and I'm like, still love it. So I don't know, it's all about personal preference. I always talk about that on my channel. Okay, looking for Alaska, let's see. So for one star reviews, looking for Alaska has 21,000 one star reviews. Okay. <laughs> okay, this review is from Shelby and it says, that's me, realizing I was about to give a big one star to a super popular book on Goodreads. She's like narrating it like it's a movie. Like it reminds me of like the opening of like those movies or like a trailer where it like shows the girl and then you hear like the narration like, mm -hmm, that's me. Like that's literally what she's doing, it's so funny. She goes, it didn't stop me. This book was beyond stupid. Miles is a little nerd boy from Florida. He's going away to boarding school hoping for a new life, or maybe his great perhaps. The great perhaps comes from a minute reference to some poet, thrown into this book to make it all edgy and shit. Fail. Once he gets there, his roommate, the character that is so poor but super smart, befriends him. The Colonel, aka Chip, takes Miles, now known as Pudge, under his wing, and now he has friends, including the super special Alaska. She is the beautiful, cool, and elusive girl. She is moody and spontaneous. Of course, the boys all love her, including Pudge. <laughs> and then she goes, and another thing, and this was a big one for me. John Green, you've had enough dang money that if you're going to write Southern characters, at least try try to get them halfway right. You basically just put every stupid stereotype known into the characters that are Southern for this book. You made them all sound stupid. And then she goes, I hate to tell you, honey, but the last time I checked, Florida's also in the South. They have accents too. You lost a star just for not taking the two seconds to research Southern speech. When you hate the fact that John Green didn't make his characters southern enough, so you take a star, like, bye, like, goodbye to your last star, like, could have been two stars if you at least made them southern correctly. <laughs> oh my god, Shelby girl, that's so funny. <laughs> um, another review says, white girl who's not like other girls finds the boy of her dreams, a white boy who's not like the other boys. This perfectly sums up every John Green book. All his characters are socially awkward, know the names of foreign poets, and come up with phrases like, my thoughts are stars I cannot put into constellations randomly. It's so pretentious. John Green is one of the most overrated authors in YA. <laughs> When you're using like examples from his other book to like say that looking for Alaska is bad, like stick to one book, girl. Like it's fine. Um, okay, that's enough of that. I could probably keep reading. I know that people do have like some valid points for their hatred towards looking for Alaska, but it's just in my heart. Like I, I always love that book. I don't know. So next I'm going to choose a book that's a little bit different. Um, I recently read The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas and it quickly became like one of my new all-time favorite books and I loved it so so much. It's literally my favorite book that I've read this whole year and I really can't see how anyone would have something negative to say about this book because it was so powerful and well written and just really a great book. Like I can totally see why somebody would dislike After or Looking for Alaska. There's just something about the hate you give that I can't really see somebody taking their time to write like a horrible one-star review. So I thought that would be an interesting one to look up. Um, pulling it up here on Goodreads, it says that it has 1,200 negative one-star reviews on Goodreads. So that's pretty interesting um, that 1,200 people 
really didn't like this book. So I just wanted to read maybe some of these and just see what people had to say. Okay, so this person's post, um, she starts out by saying, the fact of the matter is you cannot fight racism with racism and you cannot judge a whole group of people, in this case, the police, based off of a few people's actions. Um, then she gives some examples of when the main characters in The Hate You Give are talking about things that white people do. And they say, I swear, I don't understand white people. Breadcrumbs on macaroni, kissing dogs on the mouth, treating their dogs like they're all kids, purposely doing shit that could kill them, calling Target Tajay like it makes it fancier, saying dumb shit to their parents. And then going back to what this person said, they wrote, if that isn't racist, I don't know what is. I hate dogs and I'll never be caught kissing them on their mouths. I don't call Target Tarjay and any kid of any race at some point in their life has said something dumb to their parents. Now I'd like for you to take a minute and think about if the races had been switched in this context. Everyone would be flipping their shit. Is it controversial to say that racism against white people doesn't exist <laughs> it's not really real i don't know if this person's genuinely like being serious but like kissing dogs on the mouth calling target tarjay like putting breadcrumbs on your macaroni if you're truly offended by somebody calling that a white person thing and you think it's racist i don't know why i'm using this but like how is that racist like in what world like in what world are you so deeply offended by someone saying that white people kiss their dogs on their mouths that you like think it's racism and that like they're being racist towards you like oh, wow i like actually can't comprehend how somebody is comparing like a black teenager getting shot by the police and killed like the hate you give that's the main plot versus like a black person saying that it's white to put breadcrumbs on your mac and cheese Um, I, uh, <laughs> I like don't have anything to say. Like that just seems so, like genuinely words aren't coming out of my mouth because I don't even know what to say. Like that's just stupid. And I'm so sorry to the person that wrote this review that you feel so deeply offended that somebody would insist that all white people call Target Target, but you don't. So like stop assuming things about our race. <laughs> Okay, I'm not gonna read another review from The Hate You Give. I just can't do it. I'm gonna look up one more book and that's gonna be Breathe by Abby Glines. Uh, this is one of my favorite series, the Seabreeze series, and I know people probably have stuff to say about it. So I'm gonna find some things. Okay, this person has a one star review. Um, she says, the characters, the setting, the way they talk, none of that felt real for a single second. It was a light reading. There weren't any particularly boring passages, but it lacked any truth in it. I know that when you read fantasy, there's the supernatural element that doesn't make it real as well, but underneath the surface is supposed to be some deeper message or thought, usually slightly pushed away by the romantic plot and whatever. But in contemporary fiction, where there is no fantasy background to distract you, there should be more focus on the characters and you should take something out of the story. Literature is there to entertain, but also to educate or give you some sort of advice that you can take with you and even apply in a situation you might be in now or one day. Breathe was only telling you a fairy tale of a Hollywood teenage film. Sweet Cinderella-ish girl is rewarded for her harsh life by meeting the Prince Charming who's there to rescue her. And then she says, I quite enjoyed the Vincent Boys, Glyne's other book that she wrote after this one, but this one was was just disappointing which I think is so funny because I hate the Vincent boys um, but I love breathe so that's just really telling of the fact that you know we all have different views on things but um I don't know I kind of disagree with this person because I don't think that books need to speak some type of truth and teach a lesson like yeah it's really great and dandy when like a contemporary is like informative and you learn about something and it's like educational and you can really take something away from it but you can also just read a book for fun and you enjoy it and it's like drama and it's like addictive and entertainment. Not to be dramatic, but like how dare somebody say that you can't just read a book for entertainment? Like you 100% can. That's like saying you can't listen to music that doesn't teach you about a deeper, a deeper lesson or meaning or you can't watch a movie that's just funny. Like 
I think you can and people do it and it's real and like you don't have to read a book just because it has some insane deep meaning like you guys know like I do read books that are like that and I don't and that's perfectly fine like you could read a book just because it's entertaining and fun which I basically always say about Abby Glein's books anyways is that they're like pure entertainment and just super fun um so I don't know like I get that she has her opinion on that and like maybe she only likes reading books that have like that extra layer but personally I don't feel a need to read books that only have that so I don't know again it's just a matter of opinion but I also think it's really funny that she liked Abby Glein's other book um so yeah okay this review is from Katrina and she starts out by saying yet another YA romance which I actually think this is new adult but go off um, yet another YA romance that has managed to garner far more positive reviews than it deserves. I don't expect much from these books, but sympathetic characters are kind of important, and the only characters I could bring myself to sympathize with at all were the peripheral characters, not Marcus, didn't like him that much either. <laughs> Mrs. Mary was sweet and unassuming, and the gardener, forgot his name already, could have been amazing, but he was underutilized. The one-liners in this particular romance far surpassed my expectations. However, while I was expecting some cheese, I had no idea how often I would be fighting my gag reflex. They're the kinds of lines that, were they spoken to me, no matter who was speaking them, I would roll my eyes, laugh, and move quickly away. <laughs> Oh my god. She closes it off by saying, It's unrealistic portrayals, sappy, nauseating dialogue, unresolved plot points, convenient write-offs, and unsympathetic, shallow characters made this yet another disappointment for me. <laughs> oh my god. It's so funny to me when people just go in on like their hate reviews. Because like, same with me, like if I hate a book, like I would love to go off and rant about it. But like I like speaking. I would never spend my time like typing out a hate review. But I just think it's so funny, like honestly. Okay, so I think that's all I have time for today. This video is getting kind of long. But if you did like this video, let me know in a comment down below. If you want to see like another one, if you enjoyed it, um, let me know because this was really fun to do. I for sure have more favorites that people have definitely roasted on Goodreads. So I could totally do that for you guys if you want. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you've not already and you enjoyed the video. I really appreciate it appreciate it. You can also uh, click my notification bell so you can be notified whenever I post a new video. You can also follow me on my Twitter and Instagram down below. They're both just at lovelylikelaura. I love talking to you guys on there. Um, but other than that, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it and I hope you guys have an absolutely wonderful day. Bye!